Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, one of my first new videos that I'm going to put up about how to make driving wheels in 16mm scale. Okay, so please be patient and I'll get there eventually. Thank you. Right, I have me horizontal bandsaw that's uh, electric powered and I have already got a steel bar I think it's an EN8 steel bar uh, I have seven millimeters of steel protruding and I'm about to press the button to start the cutting process <laughs> Right, that's four blanks all cut out at the steel bar. I'll take those over to the lathe. Right, I'll put them down here from now. Whoops. I've also found some four millimeter bar. That will be the, for the axles. And I've actually found some four, um, four millimeter hex bar. These will be made into the crank pins to go um, to hold the coupling rods on, the connecting rods. The other piece of material I've also found for the axle box bearings here on the drawing this just under nine that's under 10 millimeters in diameter phosphor bronze can't beat it and here's the actual drawing that likes to be going by and as for the the cranks over here i have actually got a piece of bar sitting on my bench which is perfect for the job it's 3 16 thick, it needs to be 4 millimeters, so that will be machined down. And as for the wheel, die, um, as for the wheel, you've just seen me cut, that, cut the discs, which I'm just fetching now. What I'll have to do is, I think I'll have to order some more of the grub screws to go onto the wheel set here and to go on the end of the uh, cranks but hey that's only a near quick job online right guys and girls here's the drawing and a little tip I have for when you're trying to put the uh, wheel blank into the lathe is Put your piece of metal in, like I have here. Don't worry, I can have the truck key in. The lathe has the master button pushed in. And all I'm going to do is rotate my little tail stock. And with the, the uh, you notice on the truck, all the teeth are pushed in. Just going to use that round face on the front just to push it square. I can get to that point there. Swap hands, lock it off, and that is the piece in the lathe chuck, perfectly in line as I would want it. So, I'll give you an example. I'll just uh, move the, t the tool across to it. Hang on, get trying to do this both at the same time. And as I rotate it, you can see there is no wobble at all, except me on the camera, of course. Right, and that is how we get the wheel blank into the lathe. In a minute, I will show you how this is faced off and then drilled for the axle diameter. Right, 
as you notice, I have actually changed the tools on the lathe so that I can actually turn this piece of metal down at the, uh, so using the correct tools of course. So, let's get started. I'm wearing my safety goggles of course, as you should do. I have also made sure that when I make my cut, that the uh, tool doesn't actually clout the jaws. I'm going to give it a little bit more on here. And that should give me a perfectly flat face. Nicely turned. I'm ready for drilling out the 4mm diameter hole. First, I need to put my centre drill in, which I have, and that makes sure that uh, if I had used a drill straight away, it would have wobbled out of centre. But by using a centre drill, things are a lot, much, lot easier. <laughs> Change the drill. Get that crew off of there. My only concern really, and it has been since I first saw it when it first came out, is the difference between the seat and the rib rear fender. I just think they could probably have brought that together just a little bit more. Now, talking about styling and talking about choppers and bobbles, back in Britain, uh, our aluminium. So making sure it's in there square. Getting to grip. Well, it's in the grip. Do, 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 do. Well, in my garage today, we're going to make some grip for the chopper. They're normally made out of rubber, but what we're going to do is use nice brass and machine right. free hands. We've got no drawing, just to make it by hand. All that matters is the whole. Here we go. Thing. That is one four mil diameter hole drilled. Now I've got to do the other three wheels, wheel blanks, and get them to this stage before I put them onto a mandrel, which I made earlier. Should do nicely. Right, change the tool post again, and what I'm going to do now on the outside diameter of this piece is to make it nice and true. Then I can put my measuring tool on it and then see what diameter it is and compare that to the drawing. Then I'll know how much to take off.
doing this in stages so that the tool doesn't actually grab the piece and ruin the hole in the middle. Now that's sounding nice. That's the sound I want to hear. That's perfectly smooth outside diameter now. Right, move the tool post away. And then I can see what diameter I'm dealing with. Oops. Ah, gotcha. And from this day on, 0.93, 95 yeah. thereabouts. That's not bad at all. Now, I compare that to the drawing, 29.2 over the flange diameter. I haven't got to take that much off, only a millimeter or so. I'll turn this off next. Right, got to this stage now. But what I've got to do is that yes, I can continue to turn that down. But the first thing I want to do is show how this cross slide here is adjusted to give me the two to three degree angle that is needed for the wheel tread. First, I need to get the right spanner. They don't do those nuts down there. This is a homemade nut on this one. Had to make a spare bolt because uh, the old one pulled the thread. And it being a very special type bolt, it's very hard to, you know, I didn't want to go and spend money, so I made my own. I put an ME thread on it. Unfortunately, I wasn't that good at putting a the hex head on the bolt. But, two spanners later, moves, you know, does use two, two different size spanners to turn it. What's the big deal? It does the job. Right, now I need to get it away from the, the chuck. So enough distance so I can actually turn this around. Watch this. Right. Now what I've got to do is, is to set that up so it's an approximation of the two to three degree angle. That looks about right, so I'll lock it off there. Should have moved up a span on that one. That's got it. Right, let's do the site. Okay. Now, you say, how on earth do you turn a taper? Because you got this one that goes across. This handle down there makes it go this way. But this one moves the tool post along in a slide. Now this one's actually got a machine vice as part of the tool post. So all that happens is, is that each, each time I make this, it is making a cut on the on the piece at three degree angle. Yeah, mind the train going past, of course. Can have a workshop with a view. Right. But now I've turned it round. My tool post is all cross. Now I've changed the tool again. Lock that around. That's one click. Now I've got to continue to turn that down. So I'll leave it on this spot here. There's a little ratchet on the bottom down here that stops it from rotating that way. Right. I'll wind this back across. And get this all nice and steady because the last thing I want is it to be any wobble to actually throw the uh, turning off. It just cuts out a vibration as well. It makes the tool not chatter. Unlike me, I keep chatting all the time. The one thing I know about uh, 
doing turning on the outside diameter, swarf will end up going everywhere. Now, just protect me myself from that. I actually made this out of using a little piece of uh, steel um, stud work. You know, the stuff that you can put your running your nuts down and everything else. And a little bit of perspex that I heated up and bent. So I'll just rotate the little handle here, which then allows it to, oops, a bit fiddly. You see at the back here, I can actually rotate it round. There's a nut down there that I can actually adjust the height. And on the front here, I can just put it where I need it to go, in front of the tool post and everything else. And I can just rotate that. And that just clamps it off. And it'll move out the way if the tool post hits it or anything else. But most of the time, yeah, you know, let's adjust the height a little bit. It's just hitting on the top corner there. Right, so that's that little bit higher up. That's that. You can still see the work through it. So, to show you what I mean by the amount of swarf coming off. See that flying everywhere? You don't want to be anywhere near that really. A very small cut back. And all I gotta do is just swing that around here. And it's mostly out of my way. It's enough to do anything with. I'll just take a measurement. So, just give me a little dial. Digital doll caliper. I'm looking for 2902. I got 29.6. I think. No, 29.72. Yep. I only got to take off about another 0.3 of a millimeter. Right, guys. I've turned the diameter of the steel blank down to the diameter of the flange which is 29.2 millimeters and I've actually started to turn the flat section for the wheel tread it's coming up nice make a smart, slight adjustment on the front for the next cut start the machine and turn it I will now check what the uh, diameter is using my measuring tool. Oops. Undo the clamp. <laughs> oh, I've got to get that down to 26. Not bad. Nearly there. I have now got the driving wheel flat down to 26 millimeter diameter, but I've got the wrong tool on my lathe now for actually turning down the taper. The right hand side of the tread has to be smaller diameter than where it is at the flange end. So 
I'll just turn the tool post around. It's nice little tool in. Right. Now, I've got to set this up so that uh, I've got the bottom chuck in a position where it's be slightly beyond the wheel and it won't clout the chuck and the lathe. And now, I wind this back. Because this is what puts the taper on. As you can see how it's angled. To move this across. Right. So I'm hearing how you're going to ask, how do I know when I've got it at the right part of the taper? It's quite simple. The diameter of the tread on the left hand end, where it meets the flange, is the reeling, the, um, reeling diameter. So all I've got to do is, is make the taper stop at that point and it'll be spot on. So, you get a bit of touch and go now. I had to get to get it started, but I'll show you what happens. Adjust it a bit further in. Hopefully not too much. A little bit more. Nearly there. Bit on the end just to shake the flame. Now it's got its taper on it. So, back the tool post away. I'll wind this bottom tool post back into position so the jaw is nice and firm. And rotate the tool post around to this. The point, the pointed one. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put the slight chamfer on the edge of the wheel. This helps it guide over the, the other rail when it's on a crossing nose. Same thing on the flange. Just like that. To fill around the edge. That's pretty good. Right. Now. I'll find my screwdriver and get the uh, get it off the chuck. Of course, now I can't find the screwdriver. Oh, back in a minute. Right, screwdriver in hand. Right. Now. There you go. That is one wheel turned up. Now for the next one. Noting that this is the side that uh, is correct to the hole. So I will put it on this way around. <laughs> Making sure I blow the, the rubbish off it first. Right, I could do that for the next three. Right guys and girls, we have actually got four wheel blanks made into steel tyres. But I need to drill these 
to fit the grub screw. The M3 grub screw, that is. And this is my milling machine. That head can tilt over 45 degrees in each direction. But I can't show it to you at the moment because I'll need both hands to adjust it. Right. I have got my milling machine at a 40 degree angle. Nice size spanner and a nice size nut on the back. Got it nice and tight so no chance of it moving sideways. And as you can see, got a nice angle to take a drill in through the side at a 40 degree angle so I can put a grub screw in that can be accessible from outside. And just have a look how weird that looks. Right, I better put one of those wheels into the into the vise and get it all set up. My drawing, unfortunately, didn't give me the angle to drill the grub screw out. I could have measured this in the house, but I thought I'll try out um, how to drill this using my me CAD program. So. What I've done is, I've put this onto my CAD program. The blue is the width of the driving wheel. The red, the rectangle in the middle, is the axle hole. The green with the hatch lines going across, that is the path of the grub screw. Now you'll see the center line going up the middle of the grub screw interjects with the outside of the driving wheel and measure to the center of the hole is 7.48 what I can also do here is make life easy for my, easier for myself is I can actually take that and move that to the top of the hole because I haven't I've got the hole already drilled so I can't measure to the center of the hole I'll be guesstimating it so I take it from the top of the hole to this interjection line, it just says 5.48 millimeters. I'll take that as 5.5. And what I'll do is I'll transfer that on the milling machine to the correct height. And here's how we do it. Okay. Now, I've put my centerpiece in the milling machine chuck and I need to get that down to 5.5 millimeter above the hole which I'm just trying to get to it now so what I've got to do is I see I'm, not, I'm too close so I'm going to take this up a little bit and move the jaws, move the table sideways, bring that line down again, and then see how that looks. That need a bit more. That is pretty darn close. A bit more. And I think we got it. So now, I've got to clamp off here and down here. And I've got to change the bit in the, in the chuck. Okay, I have changed the, the center point for my one eighth inch and reamer. So I'm going to use this to create a, a flat surface so that I can drill into the wheel itself. Ooh. 
machine is on fine feed. So I gotta use this little handle here to do the work. Now, if I show you this, oops, if I can get it into there, you can see it's created a little shelf. So now I'll change this across from a center drill and then drill it tapping size for M3. That's the size of the grub screw. Right, tool has changed. So now, I'm just use the center drill. Right, I have fitted my 2.4 millimeter drill. So now let's drill the hole through. Yep. The two black lines on the machine jaw face are there to make sure that I put the next pieces directly in the right place. Nice interlude. Henry on TV as well. Now I've cut this wheel blank out of the, the machine vise. And look what's happened here. You just about see through the hole. I'm going to fit the M3 thread to it now. So when the grub screws arrive, I can fit them. That is pretty much the wheel blanks turn into wheel sets. Job done. Well, now I've got to do the axles, the outside cranks, the crank pins, the axle bearings. But hey, it's the end of beginning. What do you want, Ruby? Hey, you want this thing? I haven't thrown it yet, Ruby. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Still got the ball.
What you got there, Rubes? Yeah. Grub screws have been fitted. And I've given the front of the wheels a little skim just to make it look like the real thing. And progress has been made on outside cranks. Here's one that's been shaped up, drilled out, tapped for the crank pin, and on the end, it's got a screw hole there for another grub screw, which will clamp it onto the axle. As you can see, just in the jaws there, is another of the outside cranks. And here is what they look like when they came out the, bra out the steel bar. That's better. I'll show you the lines that it's all marked. So they get machined on that angle. Then on the other, ang on the other angle. Then a, then a machine the, the the corners off down to the line, and on the vice and in the vice, they will get the, the finish edging put on, and then I will sand the faces so they have a nice machine no, nice polish. So all right, so I'm just trying to take this out of here, get that a little bit just about moved. Yeah. Let's see if I can just grab it. Oops. Ah. There we go. So this one's this one's been the part machine through. As you can see, one corner's been taken off. The other corner, this one here, is next. But how do they how do those outside cranks start life? Well, believe it or not, they started of a steel bar like that. One side's been machined down to the, the correct size for the outside cranks. So I will continue and get these outside cranks all machined up. And then we're on to the next stage. I've now started shaping the outside cranks. I can't show too much of how I do this. Otherwise I might do myself out of a job. But... As you can see, that they have been the sides have been milled quite close, and where it's a little bit uneven and pointed, that is where I will file the corners off and get them quite near enough, and I'll finish the grinding off using the Dremel drill. Okay, I can't do filing single-handed, so I can't film it, but I'll show you the results in a minute. All right. I have a, get this in focus. I have filed the outside of the outside crank pin. God, the camera stay in focus. Here we go. So it's rough shaped. Okay. The next job is to get the little Dremel slitting disc out and just uh, smooth it off with that and when that's all done I'll hit it with the uh, very fine grit paper make it all nice and shiny okay right guys outside cranks are all done been polished and here when you get the camera to focus it's the two long crank pins it all started like a hex section um, steel bar and here's the next the other one all right a brief look at my bench yeah six six engines here <laughs> right. As you know, and I know you are as well. I have got a That's what the noise is in the background. Henry Cole and Sam Lovegrove. No, no, no. On and buried. Right. Here we go. Here's the steel bar. 
Right. Now when the lathe right. ready to be turned, right. what I've got to do is, on the drawing, down there, I've got to, to uh, make a turning that's five millimeters long. So what I usually do is, you know, swap hands again. <laughs> Not easy to do this. Now, if I measure, if I actually look at my turning tool, I can actually picture where the five mil runs out. And it runs out just this side of the screw. Okay. Fraction more. That's about right. Just over five mil, but that's okay. I'll use the rest up in the th a bit of thread. So now I have to turn that down to a two mil millimeter diameter, and then on the end I have to do it a ten ba thread. Might just said the train go past as well. Hey, I just got the crank pin turned down to two mil diameter, and the end it turned down to one point eight to start the tap on. This is a little tip that I found that actually helps get the die start, started on the shaft and that's just to put the tailstock up behind with the jaws um, retracted in and it gives you a nice square surface to actually start turning and as you turn the tap, turn the die handle around you just feel it in a bit more with the wheel on the back let's feed the stock in little idea, works well Right, the 10BA thread has been cut on the end, and now I've got the tool for parting off the crank pin. This will be interesting for you. There we go. I could have actually have caught it, but it's not easy to turn the handle and catch the component at the same time and hold the phone. But that's one crank, another crank pin done. Right, I have been quite busy. The axles have been finished. I've even turned up brass bearings to go on the end of the axles. Quite a simple turning little job. So here's the finished item. Grub screw there for, for the wheels. Grub screw on the outside crank. Came up really nice. I haven't gauged the wheels, but uh, they have to be taken off anyhow for shipping. I hope the new owner of these wheel sets will be very happy. 
Thank you for watching. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your workshop.